Since 1948, the American Academy of Neurology has been promoting the highest quality patient-centered care. And as thousands of attendees come together in Colorado for the world's largest neurology meeting of the year, ANTV is back covering every angle of the meeting. Welcome to Denver, Colorado, to the 2024 annual AAN meeting. I'm Sonia Mogi, your AAN TV host, and we have an exciting week ahead for you. Each year, this premier gathering brings together neurologists and neuroscience professionals, and AAN TV is here to take you behind the scientific sessions. We kick off our week with a one-on-one -on -one with current president, Dr. Carlene Jackson. And we hear from those whose hard work is paying off this week, the AAN Meeting Management Committee, they will highlight what's in store. And our favorite brain is back, Sarah Bellum is here in Denver. We'll see how she's preparing for the week ahead. Plus, we start our tour of the organizations and institutions blazing new trails in neurologic research with Target ALS. See how they are disrupting the status quo when it comes to ALS research. ANTV is always on, and there are plenty of ways for you to watch. You can always find the latest episodes on the TVs placed throughout the convention center, on the in-house channels at several of our partner hotels, on the homepage of the annual AAN meeting website, and on the AAN's YouTube and X, formerly known as Twitter. And we start things off today with a very warm welcome from the AAN's Chief Executive Officer, Mary Post. On behalf of the American Academy of Neurology, welcome to the 2024 Annual Meeting. Whether you're here with me in beautiful Denver or tuning in from around the globe, I'm so happy you joined us. This is the Neurology Event of the Year. Thousands of exciting scientific sessions and presentations are about to kick off with a schedule that is packed with top-tier educational opportunities. I hope this meeting inspires you. I hope it gives you the chance to connect, network, and build relationships within our community. Take in landmark science and leave here refreshed and excited about your work. You are part of our amazing neurology community leaders in all things brain health. Your presence makes this meeting so special and your insights, perspectives, and experience continue to shape the future of our field. Please join me in thanking our sponsors whose support helps make this incredible event possible. I also want to thank our meeting management committee, the session chairs, the member volunteers, and all of the AAN staff who put in a lot of effort to make this a great success. Now, we officially open our doors and welcome you to the American Academy of Neurology's annual meeting. Turning now to our first institute spotlight, Target ALS. After losing his father and uncle to ALS, Dan Doktoroff founded Target ALS and created the innovation ecosystem model. Let's see how this model is designed to remove roadblocks that traditionally slow or inhibit drug development. I never expected to be diagnosed with ALS, despite the fact that my father and uncle died of ALS. My dad and my uncle were the reason I started Target ALS. So what we do is we fund multidisciplinary consortia of typically with four different disciplines. They're often cross-sectoral, which means we involve industry. We feel a sense of urgency and our goal is that everyone should live with ALS.
And it's now our pleasure to welcome Dr. Carlene Jackson, current president of the American Academy of Neurology, as our first guest here in the AAN TV studio. Carlene, thank you so much for joining us today. Absolutely. You've been a part of AAN since 2002. What's driven this long-term involvement of yours? Yeah, so I started as an abstract reviewer, and then um, there were very few women engaged in committees at that time, only about 20%. So I was encouraged to join the science committee. And after the science committee, there were about four women on the board, and I was encouraged to participate or, and uh, apply for the board. So it's really just been opportunities um, moving forward that have really um, encouraged me. And it's just an inspiring way to make me feel like I make a difference. It's, it's really the best anecdote for burnout that you could ever create. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and now you're president, and one of your roles as president is to sit on the board of directors, preside over that, and work on them with their long-term planning. Right. What, what are you focusing on? Yeah, so we just launched a new five-year strategic plan. We have a new mission now. We have our, we retained our vision of being in, indispensable to our members, but we have new values and new goals. And so part of what the board does is really drive the strategy of the organization, the tactics, and the, you know the, all of the work goes on in the committees and subcommittees. And we have over 900 members that participate in that part. But the board of directors is really who are driving the vision for the organization. We have an organization of over 40,000 members worldwide, and we are uniquely positioned as neurologists to really lead the effort in brain health. So it's been very disjointed. You know, there's lots of different initiatives, and so we see ourselves potentially as the conveners of brain health due to our expertise. And it's really critical um, with our aging population and with the economics of um, bad brain health. <laughs> we really need to do everything we can to focus on prevention. Absolutely. And I know you've been to many of these annual meetings before, but this is your first annual meeting as president. Yes. What are you most looking forward to? I think I'm most looking forward to our focus on brain health, you know, since it is a new part of our mission. And my interview with Sanjay Gupta, the presidential plenary, I'm really, really fascinated by it. I've read his books on brain health, and I think he'll be a super speaker to really highlight um, our new mission in this regard. Thank you so much for joining us. Caroline Jackson, enjoy, enjoy this annual meeting. Thank you so much. Operated by the University of Miami, the Florida Stroke Registry and the Collaborative Initiative is a statewide effort measuring the quality of stroke care up to the regional level, providing feedback, and helping to improve results for patients. Let's take a look. The Florida Stroke Registry began in 2012, initially with an NIH grant. The focus is to improve stroke outcomes through better quality of stroke care, better public education, and ultimately to inform stroke policy at the state level. We see in our trends that there have been improvements in terms of how fast hospitals are, are seeing their patients in terms of stroke and, and how quickly they're giving uh, stroke treatments. The Florida Stroke Registry is at the forefront of trying to reduce the impact and the burden of stroke in our communities by aggregating data identifying gaps, sharing these metrics of quality with the community across all stakeholders in order to drive an effective system of stroke care. The AAN Annual Meeting offers top-tier education in an array of learning formats covering nearly every topic and subspecialty imaginable. Now here are the Chair and Vice Chair of the AAN Meeting Management Committee, Dr. Ann Tilton and Dr. Hope O'Brien. Thank you so much, Dr. Ann Tilton, Dr. Hope O'Brien, for joining me today. You know, this annual meeting um, is going to have so many experiences in store for attendees. What are you most excited for attendees to experience this week? What's on tap? Well, I'm excited to have the attendees experience the party. It's going to have a Western theme. We're going to have dueling pianos. We're going to have line dancing and, of course, amazing food and drinks. Research is obviously such a big part of what everyone does here. What are some key pieces of research that you both are excited about? Well, one of the things I really enjoy is looking at the hot topics. And people bring forth that sort of information. And you can look at it in the individual areas that you're interested in. And of course, there are the platforms, and of course, there's the abstracts that are really the evolving information that's coming forward. 
I really like the controversies in neurology, and there's going to be a talk about amyloid and Alzheimer's disease. So, yeah, that's going to be exciting to see. Some hot topics. Um, and, you know, one of the big things with this conference is there's so many so many events going on, sometimes at the same time. It seems like a big focus of this year was reducing the amount of concurrent programming so people could have some more downtime. Why was that important? Well, we really are focusing on wellness. Uh, think of that first, because I think people feel real conflicted on where to go. I think that you just drive yourself and very hard. So it offers the opportunity to network, which is a very big part of being here and being here on site. The other thing that I think really helps, and this has been in existence, is on demand. So in the event that you do need to or want to network or go or do something else, you have the opportunity to catch up with it when you get on demand and and to watch it. And you can stream if you need to sit down somewhere and just listen and relax. So the whole thought is let's enjoy it and do it well. And not not run yourselves ragged. Um, What are you hoping that the key sort of attendee experience will be this week? Well, we have over 10,500 registrants this year. We have over 500 programs, over 650 CME offered. Um, And so I hope that people will find something that really interests them and then something they can learn and then take back uh, to their communities and to their practices. So much planning goes into this. Are you guys finally, now that the conference is here, it's happening, can you sit back and relax? Oh. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> to be honest. But we have to give credit to the staff because we get the benefit of all of their work and all of their things. And uh, we have a committee that is fantastic. It's innovative. It's doing things. And so they sometimes have to reel us in a little bit because we get a little excited. But all in all, um, I think you're right. I think it's going to be the last, day. the last day. And what are you both most excited about with this meeting? Well, honestly, I'm most excited about the opening party because that's an opportunity for everybody to come together and relax and really have fun. Neurologists are fun. And to wear your Western clothes. Oh, oh yes. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yes, I'll be wearing my hat. I got a hat, too. <laughs> so I think that's, that's important because we need to take that breath and, and enjoy ourselves. And... Um, I think people are going to pick up a lot. They're going to pick up information from the others here and network and see that they really enjoy what they do as a living and what they provide for others. Thank you so much, Dr. Tilton, Dr. O'Brien, for joining us. Thank you. Busy week. <laughs> Thank you. From technological advancements to inspiring patient stories, the UC Gardner Neuroscience Institute at the University of Cincinnati is leading the way in innovative programs like the Learning Health System. The University of Cincinnati Gardner Neuroscience Institute started back in 1999 with an investment of a million dollars a year to bring together a diverse group of physicians from different specialties who could work together to develop a comprehensive neuroscience institute. We have 13 centers and three programs 125 physicians from 15 different specialties working together with the patient as the center. The learning health system approach is really implementation science. Typically, it takes about 15 years for basic science to reach the clinic. And what we really want to do is catalyze that. And the learning health system provides a structure where you take good practices, identify what your goals and visions are, and you have a systematic plan. I feel like I've lived in a golden age where we had almost very few treatments to where we have treatments in every area of neurologic disease that changes people's life, and there's no better feeling than being part of that. But I think the next 25 years are even gonna be better, and we look forward to those. She was an absolute star at last year's annual meeting, and we are so thrilled to have Sarah Bellum back. The official mascot of the AAN has come to Colorado to experience all the excitement the annual meeting has to offer. Let's see how she's doing on day one.
And that does it for day one from the American Academy of Neurology's annual meeting. We are just getting started. There are still four more days of AAN TV to come. And remember, AAN TV is always on and there are plenty of ways for you to watch. You can always find the latest episodes on the TV's place throughout the convention center, on the in-house channels at several of our partner hotels, on the homepage of the annual AAN meeting website, and on the AAN's YouTube and X, formerly known as Twitter. Thanks for starting your week off with us here in Denver. We will see you right back here again tomorrow as we turn the focus to AAN's new strategic plan and all the ways the AAN is working for you. Have a great day.